everyone, Miss B Hanley here again, and today we are talking about a modern history of American education. So in a previous video, we talked a little bit about the early history of Western education and how it has influenced our education today, and we're going to be continuing our discussion of that history through the modern history of American education, mainly because that is my expertise and um, that is kind of what we're focusing on in this class. So let's take a look at our first uh, point. So we left off after the Great Depression and we moved into the First and Second World War. These world wars left many jobs open because men were leaving to go fight in the war and that meant that women and African Americans had an opportunity in the 1940s and 50s to start working in factories, offices, and even classrooms. This led to what is known as the baby boom, which created the generation known today as boomers. This generation um, grew up after this time and we started to learn about Holocaust survivor stories. After World War II, uh, several organizations were set up to encourage Holocaust survivors to share their stories. And one of the most notable stories that we still uh, talk about in our education system today is the diary of Anne Frank. Um, but this does lead to a lot of the things that are going to continue to happen in this time period. But before we get into that, we have to talk about behaviorism and classroom management in the 1950s. So behaviorism was a psychological um, understanding happening in the realm of psychology, and a lot of people were building theories and experiments around these ideas. The main guy that was doing this was known as B.F. Skinner and he came up with both positive and negative reinforcements for good behavior and punishments for bad behavior. This led to a lot of changes in how classrooms and schools were run, specifically how behavior was managed in students. Continuing on into the 1950s and 1960s, we have the Cold War, and this led to a time known as the Space Race where America was fighting with other countries like Russia to send someone to the moon first. This put a lot of emphasis in American schools on science and math and technology to help build the technology that would be needed to send someone to the moon. In the 1950s, we also see Brown versus Board of Education. So before this point, there was this idea known as separate but equal that kept schools segregated between races. White students would go to white schools and black students would go to black schools. These schools um, that were meant for people of color were normally underfunded and had less of a possibility of quality education happening because of the resources that were being obtained by those schools. So they had this case, Brown versus Board of Education, and the Supreme Court found that segregation was unconstitutional. And so they had to encourage schools to start integrating. However, schools integrating did not happen until the 1960s when we have something known as the Civil Rights Movement, which was led by this man, Martin Luther King Jr., as well as other political visionaries like John F. Kennedy and Malcolm X. During this time period, there were several Southern schools and states that were not desegregating they were actually enforcing harsher restrictions and regulations towards people of color, and it did force our government to create the Civil Rights Act of 1964, signed into law by Lyndon B. Johnson, the president at the time. Lyndon B. Johnson didn't just have this particular influence on education, but he also signed into law the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which provided more funding for uh, public school education and all students to receive education. He also started Project Head Start, which is still in service today, functioning as a preschool uh, daycare for students to learn skills that they need to succeed in kindergarten. Continuing on into the 1970s, we have a big movement of desegregation. Schools are starting to integrate, which means this brings up the issue of busing and transportation. Moving schools from areas where they had lower education to areas where they have a better education is a big part in this funding process. 
In Texas, there were several schools that had to require bilingual education for English and Spanish speaking students. This also led to a lot of changes in gender equity, creating schools for both girls and boys, and specifically creating sports programs for both girls and boys through Title IX, which led for more access to programs and schools, no matter the gender of the student. We also see a big shift in education for child children with disabilities. This led to more and more students with disabilities receiving free public education and being included in the mainstream classroom. Into the 1980s, we have a movement known as Back to Basics, and mainly because of this particular report right here, A Nation at Risk, which basically detailed that many Americans were scoring lower in several categories than they had in previous years and it showed that many members of the military were actually illiterate. So this led to a big push in reading, writing, and math in schools, known as the Back to Basics Movement, to start improving schools and um, literacy. In the 1990s, you have the technology revolution, which leads to several advances in education specifically the internet, giving access to knowledge to many people across the globe. In America, we also started using educational standards that standardize education and create accountability in schools. We also measure these standards with standardized testing in this time period as well. And George W. H. Bush, the first Bush president, creates a, an act known as the Goals 2000 Act, which detailed many goals that America wanted to accomplish in education by the year 2000. This was followed up in the year by 2000 with No Child Left Behind and George W. H. Bush's son, George Bush, George W. Bush, wrote this into law to, um, in the 2000s to create accountability for schools and try to understand how their uh, education is influencing and impacting students' scores. It also impacts schools funding and how much money they receive towards certain programs. This also opened the door for charter schools and school choice, where parents were able to choose where their student attended school and where their taxpaying dollars went to to fund their education. This also led to more advances in career readiness. Career and technical education had a lot of advancements with technology in the 2000s to 2010s and created programs in public schools to help students be more career ready when they leave high school. And that brings us to today, the, 2020, the 2010s to the present. Instructional technology is changing schools. And you see a lot of these big private companies like Khan Academy, Microsoft, Google, and Schoology creating learning management systems that build on students' knowledge of technology as well as learning from home and different ways of learning. So that brings us up to the modern time period of education. I hope you liked this video. If you did, consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below. I'm happy to answer your questions or to just hear how you're doing. Uh, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in class. Bye.